Hi guys, I'm Tracy. And I'm Stacy. And welcome to the Maker's Notebook podcast number 27. 27. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can find our information where you can reach us on social media in the drop down below. Yep. So, uh, you know, it's been a minute as usual. Happy New Year. We're unhappy. <laughs> um, Happy Black History Month. Black History Month. And uh, pretty soon we're going to go into spring because the trees are starting to bud. Yeah. <laughs> um, January just got away from us. And um, yeah. honestly, uh, I didn't have much to knit. I've been focusing on other things um, in terms of setting up my um, my Project Life journal and, uh, you know, doing activities with kids. I just didn't have enough time to devote to knitting. So Yeah, yeah. The memory keeping thing using our Hobo Nietzsche, I don't know which, I guess I can flash it for yeah. you there. Um, real quick, that's, we can't go into detail, but it's... Mine is kept in this um, folder, I mean, in this book um, cover. Yes. And um, uh, I can show you a spread here. Um, let's see. Because um, certain people don't want to be on, um, on the social media as their faces. <laughs> um, but anyway, here we go. Yeah. So, so that's a spread for one day. I didn't really have anything to talk about, so I talk about my pickled red onions <laughs> and you journal right so, and i journal about it yeah so if you don't you don't necessarily have to capture pictures every day i do it as a way to memory keep and especially with my girls growing and i want to be able to look back and see how life was when they were younger mm -hmm. so that's why i do it but everybody could approach it differently some people could do it for themselves personally or you can do it like yeah. you say just anything you could journal or you could take pictures yeah. you could do anything and I think it's therapeutic. I it mean, is. You get to play with stickers, which we love. Oh my gosh! Looking at accumulating and playing with. <laughs> so we get to play with that, and just we pulled our other sister and our younger sister Lisa yeah. in to our um, little uh, rabbit hole, and then um, and Desiree, my daughter. Yes, she's like really into the, the, yeah, the so whole, whole Bonichi thing. We're constantly sending each other messages or pictures. Look or, at my spread. Oh, look at what I bought. <laughs> look what I did. <laughs> so that's so. what's been keeping us. Keeping me occupied and, um, you know, and I picked up a, a I don't want to say it's a new hobby, but it's a, a new thing, which has been, we've been hiking more, mm -hmm. trying to get outside and enjoy, like, you know, the last several weekends, it's been nice outside yeah. and uh, we've just been, got some hiking shoes and we're like, let's use them. Yeah. yeah. So we've been going yeah. hiking more for the fun of it and I'm very enjoying it. My little yeah. one, not so much, but everybody else. Yeah, she, she's not an outdoorsy person, like no. my son, he did. They'd rather be inside. <laughs> no, but that is the reason why you need to be outside. Yeah. So you need that fresh air. You mm -hmm. need that to move your body. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I told her I'm teaching her good habits here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she's buying it, but yeah. So I've been doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And um, we went to California for a friend's wedding. Um, it wasn't a wedding. It was a, like a more... It was a civil ceremony at the City Hall in San Francisco. Oh my gosh, which that building? Yeah, the City Hall building, which I flash a picture here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Stunning. <laughs> oh. I feel like if you're going to even have a civil ceremony there, you should hire a photographer because our little iPhones doesn't do it justice, honestly. It, it needs a professional with the wide lens and all the fancy lens they got. Especially such a stunning building. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And so, and people were really dressed up like the other couples and stuff. They were, I mean, full-fledged gowns. I mean... Stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty cool. But we were laughing because it was like, we were like, look at this, a one-stop shop. You can get married here and you can get divorced here. Because right next to each other were the marriage papers and the divorce papers. <laughs> And I know who made that comment. Oh, it was me. Oh, it was you? Oh, it was me. <laughs> no, no, no. Because no, no. that's not something he would say. Oh, well, look at that. One stop shop. That's funny. Two for one. That's funny. <laughs> and the weather was good? Yeah, exactly. Actually, it was like 70s for the mm. most part. And then it started to get cooler. But we went to Moir Woods with the Redwoods. And that it was perfect. That day we went, it was actually in the 70s, which was... I mean, it was just, that's the first, I've been there a couple of times and that was the, the most comfortable day ever mm. I've ever spent. It was really nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys get ramen? Gotta have ramen. Oh my God. Okay. So we, I can go on and on, <laughs> but man, some great pictures. we went, Desiree came with us, my daughter, 
and we went ballistic because there were blue bottle cafes all over the place. You can get blue bottle coffee. Um, San Francisco airport, mm. amazing. Like when we were leaving Charlotte, the airport, it was crowded. Everything is all congested. Like all the shops are rammed in together. Yeah. The floors are dirty, garbage overflowing. Which honestly, Charlotte wasn't like that before. San Francisco airport, on the other hand, spacious. It says, this is a quiet airport. Yeah. There was, a, there was an Illy cafe. There were a robot uh, vending machine that would actually make you coffee. Wow. And give you like, they had macaroons and stuff like that. Right. And then the water fountain, like all into refilling and not wasting and plastics and all that stuff. So they had this huge fountain. It's probably as big as my dining table here. It's round. And it had three fountain thingies, wow. all dispensing different things. Like wow. regular water, this water, that water. They were like, in that big old terminal, there were like probably maybe three, four shops or restaurants. There was an Illy Cafe where I had a rose almond latte. Ooh. Was oh, I was in heaven. I was like, oh my God. Compared to Charlotte, it was so clean. You can eat off the floors. It wasn't crowded. It was just... Charlotte, I'm oh like, love all like Can that. you get your game up, Charlotte? Yeah, seriously. Did the new part of down Charlotte open the airport? I don't know. Oh, best part, Trace. Security coming in, going into the terminal. They had... um Usually it's one person get to go up and put their stuff on the cat, the thing, the belt. No, this place is fancy. They had three slots of bins. One, person one, person two, person three. And we're, we never saw anything like it. So we're like waiting for the person in front of us to go. The guy goes, no, 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 come up. There's a slot here and there's a slot there. You guys, everybody walk up and you put just you put just everything on in these bins, and then the conveyor belt takes it through the machine, and then it separates like what gets to be additionally scrutinized and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. It automatically filters it. Wow! It's like I'm like oh my god, modern. this is like <laughs> I love I love progression people, and I love like technology and when efficiencies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love like that's my passion. Like even with data, that's mm -hmm. what I used to do for work. If working on process improvements, efficiencies, like I don't like when stuff doesn't make mm -hmm. sense and it wastes my time. I mm -hmm. really do not like it. Yeah. So Charlotte was never dirty or crowded like that. It's like in the last, I don't know how many years, I haven't traveled much. I think it's because it's a hub. It is a hub, like, correct. But but it's like never, in the times I've traveled, it was never like that dirty. It's bad. I know they were doing construction. Yeah. So it was under construction the last couple of times I traveled, but I was like back in what, 2019. Um, you would think that was improved by now, but it hasn't. No, but Charlotte is like most airports. And um, I didn't think anything of it until I saw that yeah. one and then San Francisco. And then I was like, oh, yeah, you need to up your game. <laughs> you need to up your game. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have thought anything of it, honestly. Right. But. Yeah, it was nice, and we had good ramen. Oh, and San, Fr San Jose, where we used to live, has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, better? Ballers, okay? Like, all the high-end shops, I mean, Desiree and I were going like, oh my god, they have this shop and this shop, and the mall is just like next level now, and uh, the ramen the naki <laughs> place, the line was wrapped, there's all kinds of food, like food galore. It's like mm. a foodie lover's haven. Mm. Like the ramen nagi place was wrapping around all, and Desiree and I was like, "Oh my god, why is this line so long? Is it that good?" And we found out later from some friends that yes, <laughs> the line is always that long. Wow! And yeah, but we did lock out and got into ramen nagi mm -hmm. in Palo Alto. Oh, okay. So we were able to get in um and try it out okay um it's a richer thicker i think they have vegan stuff too mm -hmm. which i i don't even know how you would make ramen vegan but yeah, okay <laughs> but the broth is richer richer than any i've had we do a lot of ramen tasting so we went all around charlotte tasted all the ramen we could find mm -hmm. and see that ramen that's regular is very rich tasting right because it has different fats in it because the vegan one is more like a 
plain broth. It's a plain broth. And you got to put pep um, yeah. peppers and chilies in it to bring up the flavor yeah. to what you like. Because so it's not going to taste the same at all. No, it's going to be either a pork-based broth right. or miso broth right. or whatever. Right. Um, for vegan, it might be miso, actually. Oh, yeah, right. so it's going to be very, no, very miso, simple. No, miso, is it seaweed? I don't know. Very simple, one-dimensional flavor if you do a vegan broth. Yeah. 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 But I don't always eat. I don't like eating. I feel guilty sometimes eating pork. So I try not to eat it too much. But, I mean, with a ramen, I might make an exception. Well, yeah, you were on a weekend trip. Well, I've actually been away. away yeah, you know, so. yeah. And when you're in California, you must eat ramen and drink boba tea. I mean, come on, you now. just got Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, you know chatter <laughs> <laughs> oh come on you guys don't mind us chattering do you <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while catch yeah. up grab a cup of tea or coffee your favorite beverage and come sit knit and uh you know let's chit chat let's chit chat <laughs> so do you want to start with something yeah um i have something you want to do finish objects yeah okay get my green juice in she's so good i would drink green juice i just want somebody to make it for me all right <laughs> I'm a lazy cook. I don't like cooking, actually. So Yeah, I, I like easy cooking. It's like my kids are always asking me to make certain things. So like my youngest one is asking me, can you make us some um, falafel? I'm like, that's extensive work. <laughs> no, trying to give me extra work. I don't want extra work. I mean, give me something easy I can throw together in like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I don't like... I put her on the back burner. I'm making her wait. I'm like, I, when I feel like it. Yeah, yeah. That could happen. In I don't place. mind eating it. Somebody make it for me. <laughs> there is a new, I don't know how, it's, no, it was open in 2020. There's a Mediterranean place. You've been to it, Nassim's? Mm -mm. Over there by Langtree? Mm -mm. Yeah, so they have all Middle Eastern food. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, i try it. So we're going to go tonight, pick up something and try it. So they okay. have um, a lot of hummus. Well, it's supposed to be pronounced hummus. Not hummus. Excuse us. I know, that's what we were told. And, uh, you know, they're supposed to have tabbouleh and, you know, yeah. falafel. Let me know if it's good. I will. Mm. I will, so... And Baba Ganesh, which so anyway, you know food. <laughs> Can you tell I'm getting hungry? Getting hungry, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Let's talk about food. She got me some truffs, my husband some truff sauce for Christmas. Oh, truff sauce, guys. You guys ever try that? You should try it. Oh truffle hot sauce. It's expensive. T R U F F. <laughs> it's expensive. But um if it's you a go treat. To, yeah. If you go to BJ's, you said that you get two. You could get two for like nine ten dollars. Versus if you go to like the regular grocery store, it's like twelve fifteen bucks. Yeah, fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. So. Yeah. I went to BJ's and I got it. We put it over every thing. Thing. So I've been eating um hummus on gluten free bread with um sprouts and a little like, truff sauce. Stop there. it. <laughs> That sounds so delicious. No, I got my kids eating it. <laughs> anyway, I want to show you guys <laughs> before I keep talking about food. I know you make me hungry, really. <laughs> um, I want to show you my finished um, half and half triangle shawl, triangle shawl by Pearl Soho. And I knit the size small. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I did it in the um, the color um, uh, pe peachy pink and honey pink. And this is the linen quill. So. Stacy um, graciously blocked it for me. I can't show it all, but let me um, put it on. It's um, dry quickly too, like in it? minutes. Wow, get out of here. Yeah. But um, how would you wear it? I'll see when yeah, just, like just throw it on, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> just throw that baby on. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm ready for um, a snowstorm. Although it's been getting warm here, it's gonna be like seventy today. But then it goes up; it goes back down to fifty weird. tomorrow. Yeah, craziness. These trees are gonna be confused. I know. So anyway, can you, can you see it? Do I have to stand up? I can flash a picture of it afterwards. Yeah. So that you modeling it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's beautiful. So, I like it's the, a good size, right? Yeah. For the size um, small. Actually, yeah, yours came out. Pretty big. Yeah. So anyway, well, perfect. Not too big. Too big, not yeah. too small. Mm -hmm. It's not a shanklet, right? So, no. Yeah. Definitely a um, mindless knit and definitely something if you're going on a car trip or yeah. you know, you're going to knit night or something and you don't have to worry about anything, this is an ideal project to take with you. 
I'm still working on mine. Uh, my second one, um, it's just going to be a year long thing and I haven't made progress. When I do make progress, I'll show it to yeah. you guys. But yeah, yeah, it's still in the same okay. spot pretty much. <laughs> Give or take two additional rows from when you last saw it. Dang. Okay, you just like me with It's my over socks. there on the chair. I just lit, lit on it when I am. Like, so do you keep it in certain parts of the house where you're like, if I sit over here, I'll knit on it? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I leave it down here because I don't usually leave my knitting projects around the house. Um, I don't. In general, but I don't. That one is down that chair permanently because I figure I'll just work on it whenever I feel like. Yeah. But you know, some people like Stephanie from Edible Thoughts. She's making her third. Is she? I'm she's gonna say great she with is. Colors. Oh, she's fantastic with colors. Yeah. If you need color inspo, go to her. Yeah. Feed. Seriously. For sure. She's really good. Yeah. And the needle is a size five. I well, she went up because she's a tight knitter. I'm a tight knitter. Yeah, she's a tight knitter. And I didn't make any other mod modifications. And uh, yeah, so definitely. Can't would you make it. another? Or this I would love to make another. Mm -hmm. um, I have yarn left over, but I would like to do a different color. Yeah, yeah. So um, bantering back and forth if to get more yarn and make another color. Right. But would I? I don't know. If you just want something to knit on, I, I, whenever. Well, I've been doing that with scrappy socks. That's what I've been doing. Which you should see her scrappy sock pile. Oof. It's growing, y'all. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, this is what um, one of my finished objects. And I uh, can't wait to wear it. Mm -hmm. What nice. do you have? Um, I have these Eleanor socks by Ambrose Smith. Oh, I love her designs. Check it out. Using hearts on fiber. Um, she has a 2021 Mama colorway, which incorporates all of her stubbies into one skein. I use a contrast tool here with some scrap yarn um, and then up here for the cast on like a couple rows. Uh, it's a German twisted cast on which I like and it's cuffed down 60 stitches which is medium. Um, oh this yarn here is 80 20 I'm reading my notes <laughs> 80 20 merino nylon 400 yards and it's a four row repeat so it's very easy i won't say it's memorizable necessarily just easy to just keep working it without look you know um mm -hmm. having to really look at those notes all the time mm -hmm. it's a seed stitch and lace going mm -hmm. on so seed here lace yeah so yeah um it's for moi heel flap and gusset yeah it's a pretty color yarn. Yeah, I have to take, you know, I was looking at my Ravelry feed and I'm like, I need to take pictures. Of, I'm behind taking pictures on projects and I need to do it. Me too. Because it's backing up severely. Me too. <laughs> so I need to Me get too. right on that. But um, yeah, her patterns, easy to read, easy to follow. It is. Really nice. It so. is very easy to read. I like the designs though. Yeah. I like it has a little bit of interest, but not too much difficulty. Yeah. And... Uh, and I just like the collection. I love, I love Sense and Sensibility. I'm mm -hmm. reading the book right now Are very, very slowly, <laughs> but I am reading the book and I love, that's one of my favorite Jane Austen stories. Mm. I love it. Sense and Sensibility. I'm challenging myself to read hard, hard books. Yeah, <laughs> and that one is hard, hard because of the old English. And sometimes I have to gloss over some of the things she, she writes in there because it's kind of hard to follow. Mm -hmm. And some of it have good lessons actually that mm -hmm. I, all often think about what in sense and sensibility you know the whole selfishness and oh uh, yeah anyway i won't get into all that but anyway i i, I like the lesson like the things the character of character flaws that she highlights and just recognizing it looking at yourself and being like am i like that yeah you know and yeah. then when you find yourself being like that you check yourself like yeah. oh don't be like that <laughs> so yeah, it's a good way to keep yourself um be yeah. mindful yeah yeah all right, so last time I showed you guys, I was working on um, Coastal Crop Raglan by Tiff Neely. Oh, it came out so nice. I finished this, finally. Yeah, look at that. I want to knit one, and I love, I lo as again, I said last time, I love this yes. piece here, yes. and I love the the yarn, which is the tweed. Yes. Yes, I just it's a DK love tweed. it. It's, so it's nice. really nice, yeah. and because um, I think in Tiff Nealon and she used a tweed, and that's when I got this one. I thought, oh, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And this is Western Sky and it's tweed DK, mm -hmm. and the color is Dune. 
And this was the yarn I picked up in Jackson, Wyoming mm -hmm. last summer. Yeah. And I was I, I asked for a local um yarn dyer and they put put me, you know, onto this this person this dyer. Yeah. And I love it. And the contrast colors is um some of my stash, magpie fibers, mm -hmm. um what you call it? Um, DK. Swanky. Swanky DK. Okay. And uh, yeah, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I can't wait to try it on. Maybe I'll put it on and have Stacey flash a picture. Yeah. So the needles I use was size eight and size six. Um, the, anybody, maybe you, you guys don't, but me, I'm guilty of this. When I get down to here, I forget to change my needle size. Oh, you mean for the cups? Yes. I mean for the, yeah, yeah. this part. I always the ribbing. forget. I always forget. Anybody else do that? Or is it just me? <laughs> just you. <laughs> it's sad. And guess what I remember? When you're done. When I'm done and I'm about to bind off. <laughs> Always. And I'm like, I'm not going back. Yeah. But the DK gives such, I love DK yarn. It gives such a good fabric. And I think sports weight probably does the same yeah. way. A DK and sport is like yeah. really nice yeah. fabrics. It's not too much. It's not heavy and it's not too light. Right. But guy, I guess I should mention, right? That I'm wearing material girl fingering. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yes. I saw that. Fingering. And this is Madeline Tosh yarn. Anyway, that's what's on. Mm -hmm. that is How come you're not wearing the knitwear? I started to, and I was hot. It's kind of hot. It's kind of warm. I I pulled out my um, uh, Kate Mahana. Um, which one was it? The green one. I forgot the name of it. Is mm -hmm. I remember the name, but I pulled out this green sweater to wear, and it was just like I put it on. I'm like, mm. oh no. Yeah, too hot. <laughs> and I put on another sweater. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. But this is fingering, so it's not too and a short sleeve, so it's not too. Yeah, hard. I don't do short sleeves, so yeah. she um. But yeah, but I can't wait to wear this. And I, you know what I like down here, the split. Oh, that is so nice. The split. Yeah, I like that. I love that. That's so. That's nice. I I definitely want to knit that. So can I just tell you that last sweater that um you knit like mine that you use sport weight by um. Miss Babs, what's it called? Kira. Kira. Can I just tell you, my daughter stole my sweater. I guess you gotta make another. I guess I have to make another now. Oh, she Ms. took it. Charlotte Yarn is having a Miss Babs trunk show. I guess we have to go get some Kira. Oh, we do. Huh? I put <laughs> it on your. I put it on the calendar. Look at your face, like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did? <laughs> I didn't look. Yeah, it's. Not I need to look. Okay, yeah. I'll look. I'll look. I'll I think look. it's March or end of March or end of April. Anyway, let's sometime but All right. i'm like i'm, I'm just good. going for the sole purpose of getting some kira yeah yeah i need that because i need to make another one because she stole my sweater <laughs> so anyway and she's never done that before i have a million and one socks and she won't take it scarves million and one she won't touch it sweaters i have quite a few that one she went and took it it's a no which sweater is that which what which pattern was that the kira the, um i can tell you it's the tilled. Tilled. I love tilled. tilled. Yes, I considered wearing that today. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, hopefully, I'll pull it up. That is a nice. This is tilled. Color. Yeah. And that's the one she stole from me. She rocking it too, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, she has the shape that everything looks good on her. Everything. And Tracy and I look at her like. <laughs> everything. She could, you know, she put on mom jeans. It looks great on her, right? Yeah. I put on mom jeans. I look like a, you, you know, look like an old lady. potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I do look like an old lady. And then she tells her little sister, who's like my son's age. He's like 11, no, 10. Yeah, she's 10. She's going to be 11 soon. And tells her. Oh, stop copying my style. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. how dare you tell her that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything she puts on, right? It looks fantastic on her. Yeah. So she's, and, and she knows it too, right? I know. She, so, she knows it. So uh, my, my husband took me out for dinner last night, right? Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, you know, I haven't taken you out for um, Valentine's. So, you know, last minute, he's like, you know, go get dressed. Let's go out for dinner. Spontaneous. I'm like, oh, okay. So... Came back out and she was like, oh no, oh no, that don't look right. And she got, went, yeah. Paired my outfit. Fashion consultant. Exactly. In the house. I must say, it did look nice though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 
like, oh, okay. well, we know where to consult going forward. No more Lisa, my other sister Lisa. She's, well, she's good too. She's good, but I'll be like, Lisa, to the side. <laughs> Olivia's taking your spot. <laughs> she says she wants to study fashion, yeah. so. She should. You should. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, take, she's taking art in no, mm -hmm. middle school, a year long class. Let her do some fashion, maybe look for online fashion program for the summer. So then she could, like FIT. They might have a kids' summer program. And I, I, I did look for, maybe I didn't look online, but I did look in the area to see if there's anything and there's nothing in the area. Yeah. So look at FIT. FIT That's, that was one of my dream schools. I wish. Yeah. I really um, at Appalachia State, they have a textile program, mm. but it's, I don't know if they offer anything, some programs, mm. but it's like, it would be nice for her to learn about different textiles and mm -hmm, stuff because mm -hmm. she's learning to draw now. And she said this week they are learning to draw mannequins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Good. Nice, yeah. Push. Uh, when they show interest, you have to. Yeah. I'm trying to, so I'm trying to find her passion, and fashion is, is her thing, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. design, fashion. So, I'm going to push her in that direction and see where it takes her. Oh, man. I'll be one jealous person if, her, if she goes off into that path. Because <laughs> I'd be like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an architect. I know. She was she's or so a designer good. or something. Yeah, so but good. I'm obsessed with home design. Yeah, she is. She's good too. I'm obsessed. Hello. And um, her daughter is also really good at drawing. Your daughter, yeah, Desi, good, yeah. really good. I had her before she left for, over the holidays. I had her did some um, calligraphy in my in my hobonichi. <laughs> I did too. Even though I can do calligraphy, but I like her, her style is more of a bounce. Is it just a different technique? Mine is more modern calligraphy. <laughs> yeah, hers is nice, yeah. and I was just like, oh snap! I just realized I should have had her do the second book. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, maybe she'll be back. Get have it done. Uh, well, at some point she'll be back. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. What do you um, have? Tinsel trees was my Christmas Eve cast on. Oh, yes. By Danielle George. She's yes. a little bobbins on um, Instagram. Using Chelsea Lux yarns in the Holly Berry sock kit that she had, which came with this color and this color as minis, and. Um, US one needles cuffed down, a two by two rib here. Oh, I, I love the, the bubbles. Yeah. So, anyway, let me take it off here so you can see that a little better. So, there's the bubbles. And then these are like cables. You use a cable needle for this thing. The tree, you know, the branches. I feel like it was a fast knit. It is a fast knit. It's so therapeutic. And then this yarn. I'm gonna tell you something about her yarn. Oh, luxurious. Um, love it. And knitting socks with her yarn is like the guilty pleasure <laughs> because you're like, oh, I'm knitting these expensive socks. <laughs> but the colors is what gets you because you just wanna keep knitting on it. Yeah, you don't wanna stop. It's the colors. And you know, Stacey laughed at me and she called me bougie, but it's like, I swear to you, when I knit with really good quality yarn, my hands don't hurt. It's the, the color. Her colors are really... And the quality is stunning. Nice. It's very luxurious. It's not called and Chelsea plush. Lux for nothing. It's <laughs> plush. It's luxurious. The colors are nice. gorgeous. Yeah. So yeah. that was the whole entire thing was a set, right? The yes. Cups and the... the green was mini. This was a mini. Right? Mm -hmm. It was perfect for that mm -hmm. sock. Just perfect. Stunning. Yeah. Stunning. I would buy her yarn all day, all night. Yeah. Oh, but this color here, it is just some stuff I had in my stash. Oh, I it got. matched perfectly. It matched. It's like gold in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> if you want like a little, like a nice simple sock, but with a little interest, Perfect. That's These it. kind of things. Mm. Yeah, it's perfect. Because the rest of it is just mindless knitting, yeah, right? Right. So anyway. Yeah. That's my Christmas Eve cast on. It was oh. a pleasure to knit. Yeah. I didn't block it, so oh, yeah. That's how I look. Whenever I do wear it, I'll block it. <laughs> my Christmas Eve cast on was this. Um again, like her, I I did the Chelsea Yarn Lux uh sock set mm -hmm. and this one is uh, called Christmas Jammies, mm -hmm. and the pattern is Rose Petal Sandwich Socks by Danielle George. Is it George? Did I say it right? Yeah, George. Mm -hmm. And uh, this um, this pattern was pretty easy. I I mean, it's enough interest in here. 
I think. I don't know how long it took me to finish it. I don't think it took me that long as I was anticipating. So, but let's see, the designs are going, oh, this is nice. Like this? Yeah. Can you see it? The, going like up and down, up and down. And it's every, you know. Like a zigzag? Yeah. Each column has a zigzag. I like that. All the way around. I gotta knit that. Yeah. I like Daniel George's patterns. Oh, yeah. I love her yeah. patterns. And I love her heel toe. I love this. This is a partridge. Mm -hmm. I have partridge. I have partridge heel. I love that. Versus it's the same, you know, mm -hmm. the simple mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But um, love it, love it, love so it. So did the socks that come with these? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. So this Contrast. and this. Mm -hmm. I know I probably had enough to do the heel, but I chose not to because mm -hmm. I think on her um, Ravelry page she didn't. I don't think she did it. Mm -hmm. So I just followed her. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love it, love it, love it. A dream to knit. My wrist and hand and shoulders did not hurt. So I have. And I have a sock I want to cast on. Well, I have yarn I want to cast on. More Chelsea. Um, I just have to find a pattern. I want to make. Oh, right? Yeah. I feel the same way, too. It's just like I have a bunch of yarn. Not a bunch, but I have a couple of things, skeins of yarn from her that yeah. I want to cast on. Guys, we have a socks parade. I mean, basically. Socks I don't know why. Because it was easy. <laughs> and I couldn't decide what else I wanted to knit. So guess what? I always default to. Yeah. And we don't want to knit shawls, though. I am knitting shawls this year. I'm going to tell you why in a bit. I um, So our Christmas Advent, yes. um, December 1st, we started knitting right. um, with the Cozy Knitter Advent 2021. Yes. Um, yeah. You have to see. Oh, yours is green, right? Your toes. My yes. glasses. Yes. <laughs> anyway. So my pattern that I use for mine is what I used last uh, 2020. It's the DRK Everyday Socks by Andrea Mari. Mm -hmm. um, it's a toe up. Uh, and what's nice about this pattern, it's just a ribbed knitting and there's no cut. So that means I don't have to worry about stretchy bind offs or anything like that. Mm. Though I did do a stretchy bind off, but it looks really nice like this, right? Yeah, it does. Um, without it being actual... A ribbed. It is ribbed, the whole thing. I just don't know what how I'm gonna explain this. But <laughs> um Is this part of her the heel? Yeah. yeah, the heel is different, right, compared to other heels. Yeah. Um this is West Yorkshire spinners, um, just some I had leftovers from other projects. Mm -hmm. This cream. And um the good thing about this pattern, if you're interested, it's it's a good investment because I, this is my second time knitting it. I don't usually do that. I never I I usually don't knit things twice. Um, and yes. I could see making another one, using this pattern again on something else. Um, and it's size from baby to adult. Wow. To men. So it's a nice wide, you can knit socks for everybody using this. But I like the heel. Um, this part, how it goes, it's not a traditional, um, it just, I don't know how to describe that. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's different. Yeah. I like it. It's nice. So, um, you want to show yours? Yeah. So same stuff. Um, same uh, yarn, but I used a different pattern, and I used um, heel toe do see do, <laughs> weird name, by the Crazy Sock Lady Designs, and uh, I used a size one needle, and uh, you know, it's a fairly easy quick knit, believe it or not. I I don't know when I finished it because you know it's been a while. Whose pattern is this? It's a crazy sock lady design. Oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, the heel toe. Yeah, I was considering using that pattern heel for heel toe do do si do do si do. I was considering using that pattern for my socks as well. Yeah, but I, I remember you were considering it. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, very nice, very easy, and uh, I love it. I will definitely. Um, if I can't find a sock to knit, which I find it hard to believe. I could always, I'll always, uh, I could always knit a second one of this, but there's so many patterns out we there. We do have 52 weeks of yes. socks to work through. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, okay. What else you have? Um, my last pair of socks to show. I just finished these this morning. They're a gift no sock. Way. Yeah. They're a gift sock. I wanted to be done with it because I want to cast on some other socks. Um, this is the Red Robin Socks by Helen Stewart using Casket Heritage Prince 7525 Merino Nylon, 437 yards. Um, pretty. Yeah, it's a gift for my niece. Uh, 
It's a cuff down. Um, the toe, I followed the, the knitting expat instructions for her rounded toe. It's a very simple pattern, four stitch repeat, mm -hmm. which three of the stitches are just knit. Right. <laughs> so it's very easy to actually remember oh. and knit mindlessly. Oh, I gotta try that. I gotta try that one. Yeah, it's very easy, super easy, and it looks complicated because there's little bumps. But anyway, yeah, it's nice. High of cartridge heel. Right. Yeah. It's very nice, very nice. Um, the color, I'm not sure what the color is. I have to locate the ball band. Just like my eyes. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. So, so yeah, those, so those are all done. Uh, send it block to it. Block it and decide if to give it to her for Christmas or just give it to her now. I don't know. We'll see. On her birthday, which is at the end of the year. It's still at the end of the year. So, yeah. I'll just send it. You want to hold on that long? No, yeah, I kind of don't want to hold on to things. Yeah, put it out your space. <laughs> yeah. And my last sock is Colonel Brandon Socks by Ambrose Smith. Ooh. And this is, the yarn is um, Yarnaceous Fiber mm -hmm. Salt of Finger and Weight. And I got this in, um, from my travels. It's a nice color. I don't remember. It was in Utah mm -hmm. at Willow Hill Fiber Company, a yarn shop. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and the color is called Great Salt Lake. And again, I wanted a local dyer and they recommended this one. And I used size one needle. And uh, I love Amber Smith's design, sock designs. I love it. And I hope she comes out with more. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I originally started to make this for a girlfriend for her birthday, but I didn't finish it in time. And uh, so I said, I'm keeping it for me. So love it, love it, love it, love it. I didn't make any modifications. And, uh, you know, I like a simple rounded toe. I don't go for the pointy ones. I don't like that. So I always do my toes the same for every sock. So, yeah, this is it. Very simple and nice. Can't wait to wear it. I got so many socks in my drawer right now. Some of them, I'm like, I don't know why I'm not wearing it. I keep looking at it and I keep going to the same old ones. Because it's too pretty. To it wear. is. It's like, oh my gosh, that's too crazy to stretch out and have to wash it. Crazy sock lady. I was watching her podcast yesterday and she was like, I have so much socks. Of course she has so much socks because she's sock crazy lady. sock lady. Um, bins and bins. And so she's like slowing down making socks, but she's like, I'm never going to stop making socks. No. I don't care how many I have. And that is us. Yeah. <laughs> I, so what I've been doing is like I've been making scraps yeah. because, you know, socks are the quickest and easiest thing. And I kid you all not, sock floration, sock floration by Denise DeSantis. I have yet to make that. The quickest, easiest sock Is ever. It? Really? Yes. How is the heel? The heel intimidates me a little no. bit. No. In the beginning, I thought it was intimidating, but then when I watch her YouTube um, um, tutorials. Okay. Oh. Oh, she has a YouTube tutorial. Yeah, it's very easy. Very, 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 very. Seriously? Easy. Way easier than the heel flap gusset one. Oh, really? Yeah. So here's some socks that I've knitted. In the last several weeks. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, yes. From scraps. I'm trying to use up scraps and I haven't even made a dent yet, y'all. And I made one for somebody else and I got it in the mail a couple of days ago. And I'm making another one for somebody else, which I'm almost done. I'm wondering if I could show it here though. Where's that? Watching. Um, the other sock yeah. that I'm making. And uh, I'm almost done with it. Nice. Right? So it's just using up what I have in my scraps and just, you know, I don't even care if it matched like this one, right? And I was trying to give it to my daughter. I said, hey, the little one, I said, you want it? She goes, those are not my colors. <laughs> the socks. <laughs> but anyway, if you don't want it, I'll take it. I'll keep it. So anyway, um, yeah, I have three so far and I had sent one off and I have fourth one I'm knitting, fifth one I'm knitting, and I don't know, I'll keep going till I, uh, so I can't take it no more. <laughs> so it's sock exploration pattern and I love the heel. It's really the easiest thing. Oh, I'm going to do that. Oh. Easiest thing ever. Easiest thing. Please. What is that? Easiest thing ever. You got me that for my birthday last year. Um, mustache yarn. Yeah. And this here is by um, Meta Fibers. But love it, love it, love it. And I love ankle. I, I love the color. Short, exactly. Yeah, and it doesn't so even have fun. to match because nobody will see them Who unless cares? you want. And these are nice to put on around the house. They are. You're perfect. Yeah. 
they're perfect it's very nice so yeah so this is what i've been doing <laughs> It's like candy, a box of chocolates. Oh my gosh, look how much socks I have. That's a lot. And that's the thing. Well, some of them you're going to gift, right? Well, I started gifting the other ones, not okay. these, because I don't know if these will fit for certain people. Okay, okay. So. Oh, shucks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I'm going to talk about this. <gasps> oh, so nice. This is The Moon and Shadow by Leslie Ann Robinson. This is her book came out and I was like, um, I want that book. <laughs> I could see you wearing this all the time. Here's the thing. It's for beginners and beyond. So she has it broken down into sections. Oh, like, wow, I need that. You need this book. And she gives you all the techniques, the video links and everything on how to do some of the brioche stitches that I've never done before. Hmm. Can you believe that? I've done increases, decreases very, uh, probably once, but she has it. Every type of brio stitch you can think of in here. Wow. Definitely a good investment. It was, you can get on Amazon. I think she has it if you want autograph copies, which I wish I probably had gotten that one. But anyway, maybe one day I'll meet her and I'm like, hey, you autograph. Yeah, right? Anyway, so I made the, and it's a size three needles and you knit it. It's, it's circular. So you knit on the round. Um, and then you keep going down down and then you switch the color to you switch the color a and b and you make color a b mm, <laughs> so you just reverse them um and i started actually i made i started with this scheme first which should have been on this side and then i didn't really like it that way so i when i mattress stitch it of course when you mattress stitch it you twist it right. and then you mattress stitch it right. and i just turned it inside out and did it instead and then so that way i you turned it inside out as in the mattress to mattress so in, in in brioche when you're brioching the other side so like this side right on the inside of it which you can't you'll never be able to see it looks like this oh gotcha so because i started off with the oh so the, this side is longer right I don't know if you could tell, yeah. and I'm not even sure if I'm explaining this correctly, but from here to here is longer than this other, right? right? Mm -hmm. So in uh, when I first started knitting it, I started it, what, what is inside right now? And I didn't like it, so I decided when I'm finishing it that I'll turn it inside out and then have this side be the longer part, this color scheme, and this part be the shorter scheme. Moon and Shadow. Um, it's more, it's on her more advanced section of the book. Mm -hmm. So I totally, I, I, I did brioche increase, which is easy. Brioche decrease, which is not bad too. And I had to, my fault, had to think back some rows with a decrease. Ugh. It was, it wasn't bad, but you have to be patient. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then there was, um, there's a certain kind of decrease that's really a little, man, this decrease consisted of like four, five steps. It was serious. Um, if I could find it here, if not, I'll flash it here. Um, so I don't keep you guys waiting this particular decrease, but I love the complexity of it right. that, um, this is the only kind of knitting I want to do uh, right. as far as shawls go, because I have so many and I don't even get to wear them. So this kind of knitting works for me right. because I'm learning something different and I'm adding things like, I mean, yeah. I love brioche. I just love it. Yeah. So I, there's a, a bunch of other things in the book I want to knit. Um, I started shimmering, which um, is this one here. And I love the colors so much. I went to my stash. I did go to my stash. And I couldn't find anything that, because everything is variegated, right? right? We keep buying these one skein variegated, and we probably need more tonals. Yes. Um, yes, definitely more tonals. Yeah. So I ordered a kit from Suburban Stitcher. It was a good deal, actually. Wow. Three skeins for like, yeah, you know, it was a good deal. And plus, if you sign up for her newsletter, you get like a ten percent dis or fifteen okay. percent discount on your first purchase. Okay. So why not? Why not? So I, your sale. 
Well, I only kind of want to buy yarn for specific projects. Mm -hmm. I know I've said that before, but mm -hmm. I really mean it mm -hmm. this time. <laughs> so I started it. Um, it's the honeycomb brioche. And yeah, you see the honeycombs? It sounds so fancy. Honeycomb brioche. It sounds so complex, doesn't it? I think of honeycomb pattern. It's not hard. Wow. Highly recommend. Her instructions are very good, very okay. clear. Okay. Um, and you, you can follow it if you have, you know, just have to have low patience. And then the contrast. This is going to be the next color. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Uh -huh. Oh, that would be gorgeous. Because it has this flex of that in here. Yeah. Yeah. And then the I next color that. is like a greenish color, which I didn't bring down. But. I'll flash the three skeins here so because I did take a picture of it. You know, one thing when people post projects, especially for these kind of very, for these kind of projects, I really wish when it consists of more, like more than one year, I wish people would kind of flash a picture or put up, include a picture of the, uh, the yarn before they start knitting with it, if you know what I mean. Right. Because then that way, if I'm, because I'm not good like Stephanie to come up with these colors. colors right. She's really good. Right, she's really good. Um, so I need like to look and see, kind of copy, not the exact color, but kind of understand like, okay, for color A, they use something light and not so variegated. Color B, they use, you know, so I can kind of see. And then the I can, ideas. yeah, and can help me figure out. Right. So I try to include that in my pictures, at least one picture in Ravelry of the skein. So that way, or the skeins together so you get to see like how you, how it will look, it will look. Mm -hmm. or if you want to replicate from your stash you know what kind of colors to look for like you shouldn't go with something highly variegated for color a in this mm -hmm. project and leslie did say that in the book um go for something more neutral and mm -hmm. not so speckled um i think that's what she said mm -hmm. yeah but this is um it's like a silky um it's merino silk this so it's like there's a halo right yeah. pretty it's really um it's really nice so the only thing um i want to try to figure out is counting because i think i might have lost my count so mm -hmm. does one honeycomb equal four rounds it's a four round repeat right so and it's very easy and so that's the only thing i'm kind of questioning I want to make sure I did it right before I move on to the next color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's my only work in progress. Um, mm -hmm. I highly, you should get the book. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I'm I like, I, I, I want to make this one. That one. Um, the colors are beautiful together. She's got a picking color. She's an artist, by the that way. one. Yeah, yeah, she's an artist. That one is um, stunning. She does interior design. That one. Um, you can go online in Ravelry, and I think she has pictures of all her project, all the projects in this book, um, up there. Even the, this one, right on the front cover. I, 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 at first, I wasn't because I'm not into green and pink together. But looking at this, I'm thinking in some other color, I might actually fall in love with that. Because it seems like you go reverse, like this might be A and B, and this may be B and C, B and A, right? In that order, you know. Right. So I like how she the playing with the color. Um, oh, and I I think maybe the next one I might. Well, I'm bantering back and forth, but I like this one too. I'm thinking, yeah, it's a wrap. It looks like ice cream, doesn't it? Like, yeah, and this like one with flavors or something. I think with all the one skeins I have up there, I can probably use it for yes. this one. Yeah. So that'll be a nice stash. Oh, yarn. is that mini skeins, you think? The one? Um, or is it regular? Oh my gosh, it's the same. No, it's three full skeins. Okay. Sock white. I think she's just playing with the color. Mm. A, B, B, A, C, A, B, A. Mm. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing. Okay. Which I find very fascinating. So. I do too. That's it for me, guys. What I'm about not you? working on much other than trying to just use up scrappy socks. You know. And also, too, I started Brie Ocean. Finally. Addicted yet? I am. I love it. Um, it's, dif it's different, right? It is different. And I'm getting the hang of it. Mm. But I messed up one of the stitches. 
uh, a couple days ago and I need to go back and I haven't had the gusto to go back yet. She so shows you in the stuck. book how to swatch and count your brioche stitches and then she she shows you um, how to fix brioche stitch, you know, stuff. Ah, gotcha. I need to do that then because I need to go get the book and read it because I need to go back one row and fix this one. Yeah, that's not bad. One row is not bad. Yeah. So this is uh, just stuff from my stash. And is I, this a cow? It is by Lavanya Petrosella, the beginner brioche set. Yeah. And I've had it in my uh, save list for a long time. And um, I wanted to do it. And now looking at this, you see this line right here? Like I made a mistake at some point, right? You see that line? These. How I do is I look on the back side. Oh. It doesn't look like it. No? It's weird. Oh, you yeah. see it? It's hard to I'll tell though. You. Right there. So there's a line. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? What did you do? Exactly. But this is just learning. I'm just learning to stitch now. I'm no, but I can't really tell. So maybe it isn't anything. It's weird because I try. No, it looks consistent. It looks consistent, right? That's yeah. what I thought. Maybe it'll block out. But anyway, um, this is some stuff I had in my stash and. Uh, According to Lavanya, in her um, in her pattern, she recommend a bulky weight, and I didn't want to just go out and buy a bulky weight for something to practice on. Mm -hmm. But I was digging in my stash when I was looking for stuff to make scrappy socks, and I found this. I'm like, oh, I don't care if it matches or not. I'm just practicing. So um, I've been taking my time doing it, going slow, and uh, you know, then I lost my steam because I have to go back a row. I hate going back a row to fix something, mm -hmm. but I need to do that. So, um, you know, I'm getting the hang of it and I'm enjoying it very much. I haven't gotten to increase or decrease yet. I'm just doing, uh -huh. learning the basic pearl and um, knit brioche stitches. So. I think you purled instead of knit something. Yeah, you did something opposite here. Let's see, It's just on this one right there. It's hard to tell though. I mean, you'll have to be examining it like I did <laughs> well, to figure it out. Yeah. So that's why I was like looking at it and I'm like, oh, there's a line there. Yeah. But uh, it's because you brioche pearl or something. You did something opposite right. of what you, or brioche knit. You did something. I think you're supposed to brioche pearl mm -hmm. and then you brioche knit. Knit, maybe. probably. Okay. Alrighty. And I threw everything else off. But then. But then you got back on the right track. I got back on the right track because <laughs> it's funny because. You know, when I get to my stitch marker, I notice the last one, the, the last stitch wasn't wasn't right. So I'm like, is this right? No, I don't remember. So I kept going and now I realize, oh, it was wrong. So you have to be careful in brioche when you come into the end there. Um, because when you wrap, when you bring in the yarn forward right. to co create the wrap right. with, the, with the stitch marker there, yeah. you have to make sure it falls on the right side of the stitch marker. And not on the other side because as a newbie it might get confusing when you come back to it so it did get me confused. even get it got me confused on this project and i had to think back like five rows on the plane <laughs> which was painful because it had some decreases in there oh you see but but i want to learn it though i'm challenging myself i said i have had a goals list for the last how many years and you know maybe two years three years of that and i kept saying brioche was always on the list and my husband said to me when, when we make a goals list every year for our family. Mm. And he's like, are you going to try brioche this year? <laughs> Should we add it back to the list? <laughs> are you really going to do it this time? I'm like, yes, with gusto. Yes, yes. So I had to do it. <laughs> I forgot to mention the yarn is yarn ink. Um, oh, it's, it's, a, it's called Love Something. Um, it's by Grocery Girls. Um, had it in their shop. I bought it from them. And it came with two minis, which um, I have upstairs. Um, one of the minis look like this brown. This color. I can't even say if it's brown. It's like a burgundy, like a it's wine like color. It's like an interesting color. It's like a wine color. It looks brown, bur like a, on the brown leaning side. The more brown, no, more. I don't know. That, I think, is Madeline Tosh. I'm not 100% sure because, mm -hmm. again, I lost the ball then. But this is yarn ink. Just uh, from, um, I think it's called Love Song or something from Grocery Girls. It's a nice, um, it's, it feels nice and heavy, not like heavy weight and heavy, but it feels and it's nice fingering and weight. cozy. So it feels, yeah, it feels sturdy. Because it's double. Right. Yeah. yeah, it feels nice and like 
that will be nice around your neck in the winter time when it's cold outside. Yeah. Especially if you work, work in the city or something. That's ideal. I like these things as accessories, just to dress up your neck yeah. area, you yeah. know, to complement your outfit. I, yeah. like, I like that. Yeah, it's really nice. Really nice. Well, that's it. Um, any dream knitting you got? I still have on? Stephen Shaw's Dustland shawl on there. Yeah. Um, it's not a priority right now because um, it's just not a priority. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, I, I have some yarn that I picked up when I was on my travels last year, last summer, and I want to make something. And um, one of them is this fingering weight yarn mm -hmm. and I want to make a sweater I have sweater quantities mm -hmm. so I need to make a cardigan because I remember you telling me last that this is itchy and it softens up over time so I'm looking for a cardigan mm -hmm. to knit yeah for this I made the whole he a whole he cardigan did you with that did you and was it was it this actually no it wasn't that I want to make something with it yeah. so I'm looking and I haven't found anything that inspired me yet so if you guys have suggestions I like a top down. I don't really like a bottom up sweater. Mm -hmm. That's just me personally. Yeah. And then I also have this yarn, which I got from South Dakota. And it's the Aaron weight yarn. Mm -hmm. And is it West Yorkshire spinners? Is, is that, that what I'm seeing? I think so. What does it say here? Yeah. I think yeah. It. Yeah. Oh, nice. So I wanna make a sweater with this, a pullover, because I got in sweater quantity. Mm -hmm. So it's, I just haven't come up with what I want to make yet. Mm -hmm. What I also want to make is a back. Badland by Caitlin Hunter. That looks pretty. What's it look like? It's the one, the sweater that has the like oh, bat wings oh, like. Oh, 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 oh you know? yes, I love that sweater. I want to make that. A little color work. If I had yarn, I would put it on. Well, I have some Chelsea Lux that I'm, it's the linen one, the linen merino that I'm hoarding. And I'm like, I need to find the right project. So that. now she said how ideally you would like to use something that has some drape to it. Yeah. So I don't have anything that has drape to so it. So it's like silk? Not a no, linen. Not, something that has drape. So she, she used magpie fibers, you know, whatever, finger and weight. So okay. it was drapey. Yeah. Hers, so hers is that's her suggestion. So I'm like, I wonder if Miss Babs had anything. Mm -hmm. I like Miss Babs yarn for sweaters. Yeah. And then, um, the the DK Guard Snake Pal by Lavanya. I want to kind of go to the next step. That is on my to do list. I want to go to the next step. After I'm yeah. done with this, I want to go to the, that's the next step. I made her Guard Snake the fingering weight for my sister, and I love it. I, 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 for the past couple of years, I've been like, I gotta make one for me. Yes, but then she came over with the DK one. I'm like, okay, I yeah. definitely. I bought the pattern and everything. I just need to go make it. Yeah. But this year is the year of brioche as far as accessories go. I mean, neck, you know, these kind of accessories. Um, I'm just brioching. Yeah. Yeah. You want yeah. like very detailed, com not want to complex, but you something, want something that will challenge yeah, you. Challenge you. All right. And it's not about the race to get it done. So yeah. Yeah. If I don't come, if I don't come back with a lot of stuff to show next time, I'm sorry. <laughs> But um, Caitlin Hunt has a bunch of nice patterns. She keeps teasing. Is she? I'm like, yeah. oh my god, that sweater! The la like, I think the last one she showed, I was just like, oh my god, when is that going to be ready? <laughs> I have like so nice. three, I think three sweaters of hers I've made. Yeah, love it. Yeah, love her sweaters. Love the fit. I can't wait. So, yeah. What about you? The only other thing, um, as far as from, like, I want to cast on some socks, and mm. I'm working through Leslie's book here. Um, I want to make a top. I have some DK. <laughs> I'm trying to, I bought it for Ingles by Caitlin Hunter, but I'm not sure yet. I so, love Ingles. Huh? I love Ingles. Yeah, Tracy loves hers, and I like oh, the fit of it. Um, it's almost like, the thing is getting gauge, right, with her patterns. It's you know hard. what? <laughs> if I get close to it, one stitch off, I just go for yeah, it. Yeah, one stitch off is fine. I'll take that. But Two stitches Because off. there's enough ease, right? But it's when it's really off. Mm. Then I get frustrated because I don't like doing all those swatches. Yeah, I feel like you waste yarn. <laughs> You're wasting yarn. You're wasting yarn. Yeah. 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 So there's that. And then, um, yeah. Oh, and a homespun house has um, a blanket, a throw, a blanket, that I was thinking that I can take all my scraps and then get like, use Mallow Brago because I need it to... I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe Cascade, but I have three skeins of Malabrigo cream um, yarns upstairs, so I can just hold them together and make a nice blanket. Mm. Um, the only mm. thing is, if it's not super, if it's not super, 
I'll have to make sure there's super washing mm-hmm. hands so that way I can throw in a washing machine because a blanket, I mean, I don't want to be blocking that. Ain't happening. Yeah, it has to be something that's machine washable. Yeah. So. yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I'm at. And I do have a, a show recommendation. If you have HBO Max, we've been watching, and it's only four episodes, and it's a mini series kind of thing, and it's called a, The Girl Before. Have you heard of it? No. It's um, a suspense thriller. Because I saw it, I saw the picture of it flashing across the screens. And it's like these two mixed girls and, and this black guy. And I'm like, why is the show has all these mixed girls? I was curious, right? So then we started watching it on President's Day. Because Ian was at school. So we started watching on President's Day. And we got sucked in because... And we keep pausing it and talking about, oh, do you think it's this and that and that and that and that? Oh, my God. And, and the, so the two of them. <laughs> and the story sticks with you. Like, all during the day, you're thinking about it. You're like, oh, my God, like, this and that. And what could really be the story? And, oh, wow, why is he like that? And I recommend it. So, yeah, let me know if you watch it. And I'm trying to get through Loki. Lo- what do you think about Loki? You like it? Mm, no, I'm no, still really. trying. I'm, like, I'm pushing through it because I want to understand the whole... MCU and how everything ties together. Yeah. But I did cheat because she inspired me to watch the um, MCU in timeline. In order. timeline order, we started. And yeah. then um, I was intrigued by Eternals, so I stopped to watch Eternals, and I love Eternals. And I had to watch it twice to get the, to understand it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like now it's just like trying to go back to Loki, and I, I'm sorry, I just my stamina to watch a whole movie. You know, Loki listen. talks about the. Um, What's that black guy who's going to be? Who's, who's yeah, what's his name? Um, the timekeeper or something. The timekeeper. And that's very important into the in the whole MCU thing. Yeah. Where it's headed. So, so that's why I want to watch it. And, go, go, you know, so we've been watching it on Friday nights, my husband and I, and trying to get through it. <laughs> Halfway through it, he's sleeping. I'm like, wake up. <laughs> I'm trying to understand this. Yeah. I like Loki. I like Loki, Loki, but I just don't, I'm trying to understand, because it goes slow, and then towards the end, it starts to pick up, and you're like, oh, what's going to happen, what, what's happening, versus in the beginning, the first, like, I don't know, let's say it's 30 minutes long, mm. the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, it's a slow build up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, so it's just so painful to get through, but it's trying to get a better understanding of it. Yeah. So. You see how that wall is black and white? I feel like I want to knit the whole, not black, it's not black, it's called Iron Ore by Sharon Williams. It's like a dark, dark gray black. It reads different in different lights. Mm-hmm. Like, and right now it's reading like gray, like a dark gray. Yeah. In some light it reads like a dark brown. Anyway, I feel like I need to, I want to paint. Paint <laughs> what? Paint the bottom half the same color. Just make the whole room this dark color. Oh, that would be nice. I like dark paint. Yeah. Well, not not dark brown. I, I can't get with that. But yeah. dark gray, dark. I mean, dark. I saw um, uh, Jen Stouffer's design. Oh, um, I obsess over her on Discovery. Did you watch it? The whole thing. Established home. The established oh my gosh, home. You guys, I, I I don't usually binge watch things, but I had to binge watch that. I'm gonna watch it again because I love it so. Much. I love her design style. It's so classic. So, next summer, we're going to Michigan, right? You have to get me something from there. So, we're supposed <laughs> to go to Grand Rapids, right? You got to stop at a shop, we get so, coffee. Exactly. I told my husband, I was like, because he asked yes. me, he says, so what yarn shops, you know, he tra- Yarn shops? Design, husband, home design shop. <laughs> my husband is really nice in that sense that, you know, he was like, you know, just let me know yeah. the, the, the yarn shops you want to go to and we'll, you know, kind of plan around it. And I was like, looking at yarn shops, and I'm like, I didn't see much. But then I saw it, realized... Jen Stouffer Designs is right there in Grand, Mich- Grand Rapids. I'm like, right here I don't care is where I have to go. If it's a candlestick holder, Hi, I'm going to the shop. Something. From there, I want Me the too. packaging. I want the bag. Me too. <laughs> Me too. So, yes, I definitely plan to get you something. A candle, a soap, something. whatever. <laughs> she has a, her, her son um, put in um, the, a coffee shop. The coffee shop, right? And I think he went somewhere. He to, moved. Yeah, they moved. He moved to the other side of uh, Michigan. He went to um, Detroit. And, uh, but still, he, it look, I'm like, I just want to go. Her design is stunning. It makes me want to go buy an old house yes. and redo it. It's timeless. Timeless. And she makes pieces work. Her daughter, too. Her I daughter's love. gifted. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, what a dream job. Yeah. 
I would take that. I would go do that for free. That's to tell you how much oh I would love, I love design. Oh my gosh. Her <laughs> stuff is stunning. And when yeah. I look at what all this, the work she's done, and it's not like cluttersome no. or busy or like Looks modern fancy or, or anything in, in like style that. right now. It's, so that's the key. Mm. Do not, when you, if you want a classic design that's going to look just as good 10 years from now, always go classic yes. materials yes. because anything that's too trendy is going to date Dangerous. your house. So um, unless you painting is fine, you could repaint till the cows come home. But I'm talking the cabinets about or the yeah. flooring. So like her, one of her designs, her flooring, she did tile for the kitchen, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that is way better than wood floors because I'm tired of mopping up wood floors when my kids are doing dishes or they're wiping their hands and they're walking around like nothing. But you know what? You know, the reason why they do it in these houses here is because the, it's an open concept living mm -hmm. for us and it's like living room dining room. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have that break. It's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. but, but in their old houses, it's separation. Mm -hmm. So you can get away with okay, having that, that tiled differently and oh. whatever. Check her out. Um, Check it out. The Established Home oh with Jen Stolf and follow her on Instagram. Instagram. Her work is beautiful. She's on The Expert too. One day I will afford to hire her. <laughs> I would love to, <laughs> to hire consult. her. My, I want to do something with my fireplace. I want to add some drama. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but classic drama. And so I, I'm like, how can I, I want to talk to her and be like, how can I elevate this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so. want to, I want to um, redo my, basement living room because it's just when we moved in we didn't do anything with it mm -hmm. and it's just like okay time is ticking i want to get this done mm -hmm. and i would love to have somebody that that's timeless and classic to come in and do that you the know? expert yeah because she does video consultations she? it's a few hundred dollars per hour but it's okay, so worth honey, it let's keep it to one hour <laughs> okay. some of them are like a thousand an hour i, I believe at that level i mean even leanne ford you know, I from HGTV, it. she has, she's also on the expert, but they have different prices, price ranges for the experts. Um, I think it's better than Havenly actually. Is it? Yeah. Okay. They have more of those kind of brand interior designers in their lineup. Okay. And so they have ones for a couple hundred dollars an hour, but Jen Stoper and those guys are in the thousand, like they're expensive, mm -hmm. but I think it's yeah, worth it. More popular higher. Yeah. But the, her cabinets. Stunning. Stunning. Oh, geez. We, I, it makes me follow Chris Loves Julia. Oh, yeah. Her cabinets are nice. I, I shouldn't say follow, but check out her feed. Um, she probably doesn't need any more followers. Right. But her feed, check yeah. it out, yeah. and you'll see her cat kitchen cabinets is Jan Stouffer Cabinet. Yeah. It the is, kitchen is, it is amazing. We need to have our cabinets redone because the company that did ours the first time. We don't. We don't. We love the design, but the quality was lacking, and we spent a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And for it to be doing what it's doing right now, it's not good. Yeah. So we need to find somebody to come in, and it's like trying to find somebody who can come in and give us an estimate has been a challenge. Yeah, these people out here they're fancy they because are. they got so much work. They like do. It's they hard don't getting need, people yeah, it's to hard. come to work here. Very hard. My husband called like three people, and nobody has ever showed yeah. up or even called them back. Yeah. We were lucky. He had um. <laughs> Of a landscapers, it took them over a year to get some trees, right? To get some trees, and they just put it in a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, we're trying to get um, uh, the house, we had to try, wanted to get the um, the deck in and the, the driveway, everything power washed. We couldn't get nobody out. Finally, somebody came yesterday to give us a quote. It's been that long. I need to have somebody come power wash once they. Finish building the house next to us. I'll let you know how this guy works out. We need a power wash because we have a white. Yeah, she has a white, white house. My house is not white, but my house, people were building a big development, not big, a development one in behind me. Mm -hmm. A lot of, yeah. The guy was like, at first, we were just going to do the deck in and the, um, and the driveway. And the guy was like, he said, your house needs to be washed too. And we're like, yeah, we know. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> but my point is, once. Like all the columns and stuff. I don't like yeah. when it gets. Dirty. Yeah. So, well, if we yeah. like it, I'll let you. I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. Because we're gonna have to do it in. Um, I want to do it in this like late spring, summer. Because I think these guys are moving in next. month. They're almost done. Oh, really? They're moving in a couple weeks. Okay. And um, once they finish the other house over there, but somebody's gonna build across it for me. So um, that might take a a year or so. So we'll just power wash again. But I I just don't want that red dirt no. to stain. No. Yeah. The siding. Yeah. So. 
But she loves design. She's good at it. I even had her help me with certain things and I wanted to update. I'm even, I'm even playing around with, anyway, we're talking too much. Yeah. But I just want to say, I do, my, one of my favorite things that is life changing for me as a coffee drinker is that Ravel Barista oh, Express machine, espresso machine. My husband loves this. Let me tell you, I don't have the touch screen like she does, which is automatic. It, you just, yeah. latte or whatever and you it does pre, it for you yeah you can pre-program it so yeah. if you have a certain drink you can name it the stacy and you just hit the stacy yeah. and it makes it for you mine is not touch screen like that mine is the one right below that but i'm telling you i am not frequenting starbucks as i used to mm -mm. and i'm not frequenting um you know other cafes as i used to i unless even went traveling. Yeah. Yeah, unless i'm traveling we went to Roots Cafe in Charlotte, which is one of our favorite breakfast places. And usually I get a coffee, a latte from them. I was like, eh, my latte at home is better. We went on a road trip the other day to Asheville. And usually we stop at Starbucks, get coffee before we go. I was like, taking my there you go. latte that yeah. I make, which is so much better, yeah. in my to-go cup. Yeah. I got a blue bottle cup uh -huh. that I posted on Instagram. I got that and I feel like I'm sitting in a cafe. Oh, yeah, like, this is so great. I'm like, but the coffee, I mean, I get coffee. I got my coffee from Blue Bottle on subscription. Uh -huh. I do that. Um, or if I run out, I go here to these local cafes. Um, Whole Foods sell the local cafes coffees. So like that's Summit. Seven, seven grams? Um, pure, some, some, uh, that's Pure Intentions. Okay. Um, I think. Whole Foods sell that, okay. but they definitely sell Summit coffee. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just pick up a bag of that if I run out. If there's more than two of us drinking, like say if we have guests or whatever, which I wouldn't make that for guests. I, I went and bought another Nespresso machine for guests because I figured... She did! <laughs> no, because doing the barista with the Bravel, it, it's, it's a little right. time consuming, yeah. Yeah. Um, which I like doing. Because I'm getting it exactly how I want it, but not for a group of people. But not for it's work. not something yeah. for a group of people. So Nespresso yeah. works for that, um, and I like that Nespresso machine. But now after drinking that Bravel Barista Espresso, and then tasting the ne Nespresso, I'm like, uh, uh, they're in the same. No. Yeah, my husband loves. Highly recommend. It's my favorite thing. My husband loves his coffee machine. Loves. Yeah. Loves. We even got our neighbors to buy one. Did you? They were like, oh my God, this is a need. <laughs> this is not even a want. This is a, a nest. Uh -huh. Because if you're working from home, I mean, why not? Right? So now I make Ticino as well. Uh -huh. Ticino is like if somebody wants to transition with coffee, or you can mix up Ticino and coffee or whatever, right? Um, because I'm a wuss when it comes to caffeine. Yeah, Tracy doesn't drink too much coffee. I don't drink too much coffee. It's mainly the caffeine. Um, but anyway. Stephanie's like that, you know. Is she? Edible thoughts? Is she? I'm like, is this Tracy? <laughs> When she was talking about caffeine, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Stephanie, you and I are like this, right? But anyway. Well, the doorbell is going to ring, I think. Um, we, um, I make Ticino and I uh, use the frother. That's the mailman. <laughs> I use the frother to, 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 um, to make my milk and, oh my gosh, comes up. Perfect. I bought a Breville frother. Did you? It was a little pricey, but. You guys doesn't have it on the machine? No, because, yes, it does. But. I'm like, oh, but I just want to hit the button. No, this is for the nest when I want to make evening stuff. Okay. Like evening, like not a, a turmeric, like a turmeric latte. Right. It's not coffee. So I don't want to turn on a machine for that. So I, oh, just, I do. I turn it on just to throw it to my milk. Well, I'm like, if I have people and they want lattes with the Nespresso, I can just throw mm -hmm. it into the Bravel. I know. Because I do have one from Nespresso, but that one is flaky. It doesn't get as hot. And uh, honestly, I feel like Bravel is like a better brand, better. Um, okay. Anyway, go buy, go buy yourself a Bravel. <laughs> go buy yourself a Bravel. If you're a coffee drinker. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Um, we wanted to get this out before February ended. And um, I'm going to edit this and get it out by Monday, hopefully. Um, or probably sooner. Uh, we will come back to you in March. Yeah. For sure. Get mm -hmm. back on our monthly schedule. Mm -hmm. One day we'll get to the two times a month thing. But right now we don't even have enough projects yeah. to even get there. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think this is fine for now. Yeah. And if you have any feedback or comments, leave it in 
below. We yeah. love feedback. Thank you for Thumbs. watching. Thank you for watching. Liking, subscribing, and commenting. This is always great. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.